How do you follow up a series as popular as Dark Souls? In 2016, this was the problem facing From Software. A game studio with a long, prestigious history of making games, the company had one standout mega-hit franchise that overshadowed all else. Their game library was eclectic and varied, but Dark Souls was the crown jewel. It was the series that everyone cared the most about. So, as they wrapped up Dark Souls 3 and completed this world-famous trilogy, what could they possibly do next? From Software's president, superstar auteur game maker Hidetaka Miyazaki, had a plan. The company's future after Dark Souls, he decided, hinged on bringing back what he loved about From Software's games before Dark Souls. It was time for a nostalgia trip. This is the story of Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, and how From Software looked to their past in order to chart their future. The plans for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice actually started long before the conclusion of the Dark Souls series. Back around the time that From Software had finished Bloodborne, there were already murmurs across the studio about doing something different. Bloodborne, Demon's Souls, and Dark Souls were all games that were heavily steeped in European folklore. They had come from director Hidetaka Miyazaki's love of Western architecture and aesthetics. But after four games set in this part of the world, it felt like time to try something new. The solution came from earlier games that the company had produced. Back before Dark Souls, From Software had made games like Otogi and Ninja Blade, which were fast-paced action games set in a more traditional Japanese setting. This felt like a nice way to use the strengths that the studio had developed while working on Dark Souls. The studio was good at creating big, expansive worlds filled with colourful characters and interesting secrets, and a game with a bit more speed to it would mean approaching these worlds in a totally different manner. The aim of the game was shaking things up and trying something new, while also using the experience that Hidetaka's studio had developed over the past few decades. This process also involves stripping back a lot of the wider elements of Dark Souls gameplay in order to focus on a more narrow design. The deliberate decision was made to create a dynamic protagonist for the game, instead of letting the player come up with their own character. Instead of a lone, unimportant wanderer experiencing the game's story from the sidelines, this time, the player is thrown right into the fray as the most important person in the world. Even the decision to eliminate different character classes and much of the game's customization work towards giving the player a more structured narrative experience. Why do this, when From Software's previous games had been so well received? Simple. To try something new. What was the point of getting stuck in a rut and making the same game over and over? To this end, Hidetaka also made a conscious effort to stay away from writing or editing the game's dialogue. He felt that his quirky style of writing was a little too familiar to his company's fans, so he wanted to give other members of the team a chance to shine. Sekiro shouldn't just feel like yet another Souls game, it needed to feel like a unique experience in its own right. This being the case, Sekiro wasn't the only project that Hidetaka elected to work on. He was used to pulling double duty and creating two games at once, such as helming work on Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3 at the same time. But alongside Sekiro, he also chose to make something totally different. Deracine, a non-violent virtual reality adventure game. This too was a throwback to earlier From Software games. One in particular, Echo Knight, was one of From Software's earliest games, and instead of being about fighting, was about mystery and exploration. So, Hidetaka worked on both Deracine and Sekiro at the same time, and he felt that these two very different games complemented each other perfectly. Sekiro, 
being very much in the same gory, violent vein as Dark Souls, could be overwhelming. After a long time spent in this creative world, Hidetaka would get exhausted. When this happened, he simply picked himself up, moved down the hall, went into a room in a different part of the studio, and worked on Derecene instead, allowing the game's calm, relaxing environment to wash away all his tension. But, of course, he could end up staying in this peaceful world for too long as well. Whenever he felt like he'd indulged himself too much and he needed to leave this sleepy game behind, Hidetaka would move back to working on Sekiro. The typical process for making a game at From Software is very well established. First, the team of creators put together their design ideas for the general tone and style of a game, and then they shop it around to publishers to see who might want to work with them in bringing it to customers. This time around, Activision ended up partnering with From Software, and Hidetaka found their unique perspectives and talents very appealing. From Software games, particularly those in the Souls series, are not known for being very forgiving to new players. Thus, Hidetaka relied on Activision to make Sekiro a little more friendly to those who might not have already got good at playing these kinds of games. This didn't mean watering down the challenge of the title, but rather building in a difficulty curve. Most notably, Activision worked hard on creating the early game content, such as clear tutorials, to stop players from feeling overwhelmed if they weren't used to the intense experiences that From Software tended to make. Activision even decided on the name of the game. Initially, the plan had been to simply name From Software's latest creation, Sekiro. But when putting together a trailer for the game, Hidetaka decided to make reference to the game's exploration of life after death, adding in the text, Shadows Die Twice. The team at Activision loved this, and after some persuading, convinced From Software to officially add it to the game's title. The end of development on Sekiro Shadows Die Twice came when its deadline rolled around. There was no single moment when Hidetaka sat back and announced that he was finished. As a perfectionist, Hidetaka knows that he'd keep tinkering and polishing all of his games forever if given the chance. Thus, he sets his projects very clear, specific deadlines. Once the deadline is reached, the game is finished, even if he feels like there's more he could add. Because, ultimately, there's always more that Hidetaka would like to add. Thus, at the end of three years of development, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice was completed, and Hidetaka was pleased with it. This wasn't a Dark Souls game. It wasn't completely a spiritual successor to any of the previous Japanese folklore-inspired titles that From Software had made in the past. It was its own unique thing, and that made Hidetaka happy. The moral of the story is that sometimes it's important to try something new. You can become safe and complacent in your comfort zone, doing the same thing over and over. While this can be very easy, it's often hard to learn when you're always repeating yourself. Try something new, learn a new skill, set a different kind of goal, and work towards developing in a different way. Don't forget all that you've already learned, but bring these skills with you as you venture into the unknown. You might not always succeed. In fact, if you're doing this right, you'll definitely fail sometime. But you'll learn, and you'll grow, and that's what matters most.